welcome to the Clashing of Steel. And today I am once again playing War Dogs, and the commander, of course, is Burika. The ambush alone can give War Dogs the edge over the opponents. As long as the dogs dodge the strike, they should be out of any big harm unless they are flanked or surrounded on all sides. Although the War Dogs ignore the phalanx, they often aren't ideal to send against spear or pikemen. Just because spearmen can hold them, they can remove phalanx and fight them. War Dogs is a support unit and... This... this... why? God, why? He could have beaten this guy. This guy definitely had to drop on the opponents and he just didn't use it. So sad. Okay, where was I? Ah yes, the War Dogs was a support unit that isn't meant to send in in a struggle fight. They can't withstand against the swordsmen. They will get uh, punished by them. To be honest, they can't withstand against most melee units. They can fight against them, but if they're targeted, they will lose. But what makes them special is the impact damage. The charge of the dogs is very aggressive. Against the pikemen like this, it is an excellent target. You can even leave them engaged just to keep them from deploying. Or perhaps if you just want to force them out of phalanx, that is great enough reason as well. Pikes cannot deploy themselves and swordsmen can engage them. But why I usually don't want to send them against any spear or pike units is because usually behind spear or pike units there are a lot of archers and ranged units. And these ranged units do a lot of damage to the war dogs. And that is a real downside when you send them to fight against the spearmen. Perhaps another big problem you see here with the war dogs is that they will try and go after their first target. So as you saw the pikemen pulled back and the spearmen were pushing forward and most of the dogs or a lot of them got stuck between the spears and the swordsmen. And that is the sad part because their main target is still the pikemen. They don't focus the closest enemy, they focus the target they were sent against. So my mistake was leaving them after the target when I actually should have pulled them back. So another unit of dogs is about to engage these spearmen. This time I'm also not going to send my handlers in because I don't want to remove the ambush effect which I did with the last handlers. So the war dogs, they might still take a little damage but they won't take damage from strike abilities anymore, which is great. Most of the damage probably that they will take is from the friendly fire, which the archers and javelins are performing. Personally, I like the idea of war dogs. They are an excellent tool, but it is often hard to find a proper use for them, a perfect location where to use them. Oh, it seems that the canyon pass is lost. Well, I probably should have been there. It might have been a bit more fun. But still, all I did here was rather important, although I did lose some troops. Another great thing to do with the war dogs is of course to let them loose against the ranged units. They will eat the ranged units up so fast and the ranged units will panic if all of their javelins, archers or slingers or even the artilleries are attacked by the dogs because they don't have any form of defense against the dogs. Even when sending them to fight against the dogs, they will just lose. Although starting tier 6 and somewhere even beyond, there is another ability for the war dogs. Or another release ability, so to say. Unleash is the regular ability. It does give impact damage and it lets loose the war dogs as long as you call them back. And the other one is fetch, which only lets your dogs lose for 10 seconds. After what, they will automatically return. Oh, they were baited by the pikemen. But well, fetch basically tries to teach you what you should use against uh, melee opponents. Opponents who can beat you in head-to-head -head battles. It basically means you should send them in with impact damage and pull them back out. And that is what the fetch ability actually does. He sends your dog in with the impact damage, with really fast damage. You can't send them very far or they will just return. This is basically what should be used against infantry opponents if they can't counter charge you or if they can't, uh, well, counter you in many other ways. You just go for the impact damage and you try to do as much of it as you can. Basically just by letting your dogs loose and pulling them back. Letting your dogs loose and pulling them back. 
It is perfectly related to the use when flanking, of course. You're behind your opponent, you're gonna let your dogs loose, they're gonna do some damage, they're gonna pull back out before opponents will focus them. As I said, I do like the war dogs, but it can often be hard to find a perfect spot for them to fit in in a match. At this location, I actually failed a bit once again. I let my dogs fight there and I should have pulled them back when I had my troops to the side of the swordsman. That way I could have pulled my dogs out without them suffering any unnecessary damage and perhaps even flanked from the rear. But well, my focus is shifted once again on two sides of the map. One where I'm trying to fend the base and the other one where I'm trying to assault. This type of a long distance multitasking can often pay off or perhaps in some cases even punish you. I'm often getting punished pretty much half the time, but I just try to flip it around. And I love how my war dogs worked here. Although they got some damage with that corner there, they were, well, fast enough and agile enough to scare those horsemen straight. As you see, this is my punishment here. My war dogs suffered a lot of damage on the hands of those uh, swordsmen. Oh, how I just hate how the ranged units can do damage to the dogs. Okay, this here is totally acceptable, I mean, they did a lot of damage. I was out in the open, it is acceptable that they should do a lot of damage. I mean, they are slingers and of course there's a lot of them. But perhaps what I hate more is that when I send my dogs to engage on an infantry, let's say spear unit, the archers will start to shoot the engaged war dogs, and surprisingly enough the spear unit will take little damage while the war dogs pretty much get annihilated. That is the biggest BS I hate when playing war dogs. I mean the war dogs are basically right underneath the spearmen. They're pretty much pushed against them and uh, well they take a ton more damage while the spearmen are basically getting shot in the back. I do understand war dogs taking a lot of uh, archer fire and suffering because of it because they're out in the open. But when they are engaged and deep inside the opposing unit, the opposing unit suffers nothing and the war dogs will just get annihilated. So here I'm using my last uh, remnants of the war dogs of this unit to surprise these uh, slingers a bit and oh he realized I am here and he chose the worst possible option I think I mean I can pretty much cut everything off right now stopping their escape and cutting them down there aren't much of opponents left but you just gotta love these lovely charges when they're trying to get away and fail at it I even think he tries to rout me here or try to engage me and uh, destroy me by damaging my morale enough, but that is not going to happen. War dogs are a hard unit to manage. You often need a bit of luck to be successful with them and of course you can't fight against all opponents. There are specific fights where you can support or harass your opponents. Ranged units are your biggest enemies and you gotta be rather careful when fighting against them or trying to avoid them. Oh, they almost succeeded with their moral damage, but they were left a little short. So I guess it's time we take a look at the scoreboard. So perhaps even a bit surprisingly, I am leading my team. I'm the best in my team, I did a bit more than the elephants, who did quite a lot actually. They didn't do as much support as I did though. So under the watchtower, at first there were the opposing archers, which managed to get the third place in their team. There were of course uh, my friendly archers, who sadly are at the bottom of my team. There was also a Leonidas player who is the second best in their team, who died miserably thanks to archer fire and my war dogs. And of course my team's uh, second best Germanicus did some damage or tried to help us there with one unit of swordsmen. But that did not go as planned. In the end, I chased after the opposing slingers who were very defensive for some reason. They could have been utilized in several other locations, but they thought defending the base from the high up cliff would be a possible option. Overall, I have to say I am a bit surprised that most of our melee units, and perhaps even that one cavalry unit, didn't perform uh, well better than me or perform highly in this battle. I have to say I was a bit lucky getting this score, the opponents weren't uh, acting against us that well at least. They weren't very careful, although they tried to be, and perhaps even the opponents I faced were 
ideal in many ways. Personally, if anyone is interested in the War Dogs, I don't think you can go wrong with Boudicca. I mean, Vercingetorix has its uses, but, uh, well, it works in several ways. Some also like to play it with Arminius, but I think Boudicca will get most out of it with uh, ignoring the strike abilities. For some reason, I often manage to get lucky with this commander and flip the game around. I don't know how, I don't know why, it just happens. Anyways, I suggest this commander, try it out. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.